All right, Tim Blanchip here again, Divorce 661 Daily Perspective, Day in the Life of an LDA. This is now episode 20. I hope you're all doing well this Wednesday. I hope uh, you're not suffering from allergies like I have been. I had to take yesterday off. I was coughing, choking, eyes are watering. Hopefully you can't see how bad I look. But uh, yeah, the, uh, those winds uh, pick up in that heat and I'm done for. All right, let's get into it. Still, I got in the office today and boy, was it busy. So here's what we worked on today. Finalized a San Diego settlement agreement. Uh, we final, uh, finalized and started a new case for Solano County. So Solano County, we're getting a lot more clients from lately. So I was able to finalize a judgment package, settlement agreement, get that turned into court. And then we took on a new case today as well uh, for Solano. Um, I completed an entire case for Santa Cruz County. Had someone hire me on Monday, got the case filed, just took a couple day, uh, hours to get that back. We were able to e-file with Santa Cruz, the initial documents. Uh, but after that, we have to um, get that turned in. There's this pretty straightforward case, no assets, no debts, no kids. And we we're just doing the dissolution. So when we do that, I'm able to finalize all the paperwork in one shot. Once I have the case number from the court, finalize all remaining judgment forms, settlement agreement, the whole thing. I'll, even, I'll post date certain things because like the request in or default, that can't be filed obviously for at least 30 days after the uh, date of service. So I'll predate all the forms so they can sign them in one shot, go out and get it notarized, mail to my office. I'll get it prepped. And when that 31st day comes by, I will turn that in to court. And then they're, that way they're just done right off right off the bat. They're not going through weeks of, of working on paperwork at different stages. All right. Uh, took over an Alameda County rejected judgment. Um, Alameda is interesting. They will uh, uh, write a, uh, I want to say an interesting, but a more specific uh, reject letter. I see rejects from all over all the counties in California when people have me take over their case. With Alameda County, they uh, it's actually someone that's almost like they're writing a narrative. Most of the counties just have like a standard four or five page judgment reject sheet and they'll mark off or they'll tick off the box of what the issue was, but they won't give you any further explanation. This with Alameda County, we see this all the time. It, they basically started off like uh, like they're writing you a letter. And it says something to the effect of, I should have had a copy of it, but it says, thank you so much for turning in your uh, divorce paperwork. We appreciate the amount of time and effort you put in to, uh, you know, doing your, your, your paperwork. But here's all the problems you have with your divorce and your paperwork. And they'll literally, like for the the issue, say this this one of the issues was the petition did not turn in their uh, FL-141. And it not only said, you know, you need to turn in the FL-141, but it said, here's why. And then make sure you mark on this box and that box. And I mean, it was a solid like paragraph of things to to do to fix it. And there's obviously multiple other rejects, but we took care of that entirely today, got all of their updated paperwork to them so they can sign, get that in, and then I can turn in their judgment to the court. Filed a new case in San Luis Obispo today um, and received copies in just a few hours. So some of these, I don't want to call them smaller courts, but maybe they don't handle as many uh, cases as other counties. Um, we are getting these initial um, uh, petitions filed quite quickly. Um, in most cases, sometimes the same day, sometimes a few hours, but then we have our oddballs that for some reason, like Orange County, uh, Riverside, which we can now e-file with, it's taking them three or four days to get us copies. What else did I do today? Took over rejected judgment from Contra Costa and prepared their settlement agreement. So we use the settlement agreement format for Contra Costa the, that court prefers those, those take, uh, they're not any different, it's just a different format. It contains all the same information as the judgment forms. But um, that's why when you hear me say I did a judgment package, that's probably referring to the forms. And if I'm talking about a settlement agreement, that's the, the settlement agreement portion of the judgment package. Um, and yeah, today was busy. So uh, busy. Uh, finalized the judgment package for four LA County cases today. So got four cases wrapped up, all their paperwork. Uh, completed out to them for electronic signatures and e-file. As you know, we can do that in LA County for the judgment. Uh, also finalized a very long Orange County settlement agreement, tons of assets and debts. Orange County allows for the forms, but like I say, when I have a lot of assets and debts and narrative and things they want to include, I'll use the settlement agreement format. Uh, it's just easier because we're not trying to fit all this information into the boxes. So that's what I did today. It was up very early, 2.30 in the morning. My brain works in such a way that I, I'll wake up in the middle of the night to roll over and realize all the work I have ahead of me and I'll get in the office and just start knocking it out. 
is the more work I get done before like 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. when the phone calls start, I can uh, I get a lot of work done. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some issues and things that came up while I was uh, handling these cases today. So this will hopefully help you in your divorce if that's what you're doing. Um, so I have a, a it says here, don't list full account numbers. Okay, so here's what happened here. So at a court actually reject a client's judgment it wasn't ours they did their own judgment and the court rejected the judgment because they were listing too much information in the settlement agreement they're listing the full names of their accounts full account numbers address of the bank i mean they're giving them you know the court basically said hey this is potentially and technically can be public record you're giving a lot of information and we're we're not going to allow you to turn this in you just need to be giving us the basic information we need and they exactly they said exactly what i've been saying for 11 years for the asset you name list the full name of the asset and the, and then the last four digits of the account number that's it that's all they need so this is the first time i've ever seen a court reject a judgment saying you provided too much information and i'm glad they're doing that because it's just scary the amount of information that gets put on these settlement agreements. Even when I worked at the courts 12-ish years ago and for a law firm uh, prior to that, where the settlement agreements have so much information, even including social security numbers, driver's license numbers, it's crazy. So we go to all extent to keep your uh, privacy as best we can and only give the court what they need in order to sign the settlement agreement. Now, to the other side of that, Make sure you're listing enough information to identify the asset or debt. I have a worksheet that I'll send to my clients that, that ask them to provide the terms of their agreement. And I have a whole uh, sample or example, uh, basically, that says for you know vehicles, I need your make, model, and license plate. For as, you know assets and debts, I need the full name of the asset, last four and the last four digits of the account number. This would be for bank accounts, credit cards loans, retirements, pensions, everything we need to identify the exact same way. And I had two judgments I was working on today, finalizing their paperwork and working on their settlement agreement. And the worksheet that they sent me basically said, Fidelity Retirement, Schwab account, uh, this XYZ brokerage. And it didn't have any identifying information. So you can't just, don't just say Fidelity, say Fidelity 401k account number 1234. And do that with all your assets. That's how the court's going to want them listed. If they're not identified properly, the court's also going to reject your judgment for that same reason. Okay, order the order of forms when you submit your judgment. So this is for the gentleman who texted me today on how to submit a default judgment. No assets, no debts, no kids. That was the text. It's a very long text. It said, um, Tim, I followed all your videos on how to complete the paperwork. It's a default without an agreement. Um, and I, I did, I, this is how I filed it. Like you said, and how do I stack the forms? Like, how do you submit the forms to court? So this is going to be specifically, well, it'll be for any case, but I'm going to talk, rattle off the forms that are specific to a default without an agreement. And I'm talking about the judgment package forms. So you're going to have the 180 as a face sheet. And below that, you're going to have the 343 spell support order and the 345 property order that will be stapled together. That's one item, 180. 343, 345. That's going to be your settlement agreement. You're going to have the 190 as a separate document. You're going to have the 170, that three-page document, as a separate document. You're going to have the 165, the request under default, as a separate document. Am I missing anything on the default? I think that's it. Just the judgment itself, the settlement agreement, is just the the those particular court forms for the settlement. In that case, it's going to be the 180, 343, 345. Every other document is a standalone document and will not be attached. And it's a good question, actually, because I had um, the, one of the judgment rejections I took over today. The court rejected it because, and I'll, I'll tell you, they rejected it for anything. They rejected it because they didn't list the appropriate or correct number of pages that followed the 180. If you look at the FL 180, you'll see on the bottom of page two, it says how many pages are attached. They wrote 13. And the reason they wrote 13 is because they put everything behind the 180. They put the 180, they put their settlement agreement, they put the 170, the 144, the 141s, they put everything behind that. That's not how that works. All those forms are standalone. So their, their settlement agreement technically was only three pages. All those other documents they had listed behind that page two of the 180 were actually standalone separate uh, procedural judgment forms. 
Okay, next subject. There are no requirements that you live apart or even move out prior to filing for divorce. I'll get people telling me, Tim, we, you know, we haven't filed yet because we haven't officially separated yet. You don't have to. The other question that comes up is if we're still living together, what date of separation do we use? Well, use a date of separation that you guys talked about the divorce. Use a date of separation where you started living in a separate bedroom. Use a date of separation of just the day we file the paperwork if there's no previous date. And keep in mind, if you guys are amicable, cooperative, like all of our clients are, the date of separation isn't going to be as critical as it would be, say, in a contested case where you guys are fighting over everything. Because regardless of the date of separation, you guys can decide how you want to divide up your assets. Whereas normally the date of separation, I shouldn't say normally, the date of separation is the line in the sand for the division of, of community property and separate property. But if you guys are in agreement and you want to use dates other than that, that's going to be fine. Whereas, say, in a contested case going to court, they're going to use that date of separation for division of all assets and debts to make those decisions for you. And the reason I brought this up is we have clients today, one the settlement agreement that I drafted today, we um, and this goes to uh, parties uh, making interesting decisions regarding housing and selling the house or refinancing or buying buying out the house is that they are deciding to live together until December 2026. So we're talking three, four, five, is that four years? Three years, three more years, 24, 25, three years are going to live together. And I don't, you know, this is the don't ask, don't tell uh, office. We don't ask what's going on or why you're doing things. Um, you tell us what you want and we'll get it done. And my assumption on this is like many of our clients who have homes are trying to avoid having to refinance where one party wants to keep the house or maybe uh, buy out the other. They're they're coming up with these agreements to refinance. I told talk, talked to you about one uh, last week. They're going to wait five years to refinance and do the actual buyout. We have people staying together for a year. This is probably the longest. They're going to stay together for three years. The goal is they're probably very amicable. They still wanted to get the divorce done. We still put custody orders and uh, they didn't want any spousal charge, ch uh, spouse support or child support, which really wouldn't make sense if you're going to continue to live together. Uh, they're both self-supporting. They were splitting, they in the agreement, we're splitting up certain bills that they're going to pay. One's going to pay the mortgage, one's paying utilities and all these other bills. And that's fine. They're going to have a living arrangement for the next three years. And hopefully um, interest rates will come down to the point where they can then do that buyout and uh, and move on with their lives. So that's a possibility. Um, I tell folks, don't worry about the court getting involved with what you want to do. Tell me what you want to do. I'll tell you if it's possible or not. Tell me in plain English. I'll write it up the way it needs to be written up. And that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for uh, joining me on episode 20, the big 2-0 of uh, Day in the Life of an LDA, uh, the Divorce 661, Daily Perspective, episode 20. Talk to you tomorrow.